Good morning, everybody. Many thanks for joining the webinar today. Uh, my name is Richard Bates. I'm Sales Director for EBS. Uh, and for those of you that don't know us, we're Electronic Business Systems, uh, abbreviated to EBS. We're based just outside of Birmingham near Spaghetti Junction. We've uh, been established just over 40 years and we're a long standing Sage partner. Um, and we've spent over 30 years reselling Sage 50, Sage 200. Uh, in various forms, and we've also been partnered with SICON for many years as well. Um, so EB, EBS and SICON, we've got a number of joint customers that benefit from the integration between 200 and their products, uh, and we wanted to share this with you today. So um, before I pass you over to Ben at SICON, uh, we're going to talk about and uh, demonstrate WAP expenses. Um, from a housekeeping uh, point of view, we're going to record the session. Um, and we'll make that available to you afterwards. Uh, we'll send that out on the link. Um, obviously, if you have got any questions, feel free to put them into the chat. Uh, alternatively, uh, there will be a little um, uh, element at the end of uh, the demonstration where we can uh, answer any questions that you might have. Right, without further ado, I'll uh, pass you over to Ben now and um, yeah, hope you enjoy the session. Brilliant, thanks so much, Richard. So my name's Ben. Um, I'm the business partner account manager here at Zycon. So we develop applications just for Sage 200. So essentially what that means is that we take the existing Sage 200 platform and we provide extended functionality um, for lots of those modules. So some of those may be, um, for example, manufacturing. It could be expenses that we're covering off today, um, but also things like, you know, um, elements for bill of materials um, and also works order management as well. So we cover lots of different elements, but again, today we're just going to focus on the expenses piece. So you should be able to see the Sycon web page um, just here. All of the information that we have about our products is available on our website, so feel free to, to have a look just there. Um, so firstly, so what is uh, what is WAP? Essentially, what we're doing is we are taking the Sage 200 platform and we're providing um, an additional framework around that. So essentially what we're doing is we're using um, a, a browser you guys to access um, the process of requesting whether that's an expense, whether that's a purchase order, whether that's um, holiday, to then send that request through to approval. Once it's then been approved, that then gets sent through to um, the Sage 200 so you have real time visibility. So the key benefits really of WAP, and we'll go through in just a moment exactly how that works, but you've got real time visibility of costs. So as opposed to the manual processes that you have at the moment, which is inputting um, you know, things like expenses, what we're doing is we're automating that process for you um, and giving members of staff the autonomy to request that themselves. Um, we're also extending the key use of you know, your business processes. So what it means is that Sage 200 has real time information um, and an up to date purchase ledger for non Sage users. And I think that's a really key point because what we're doing here is we're extending the functionality of Sage, but we're not requiring those people to know how Sage works. Um, you know, get over that learning curve. You know, it's um, it can be a tough system to learn if you're not necessarily used to it. Um, but we're giving them the framework to be able to help you as a department, but also to be in line with things like budgets um, and ensure that the spending and the expense requests that are coming through are in line with what's already been approved. And one of the key things really here is that we're eliminating the need to re-enter data which we all know is costly and time consuming. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through to um, our WAP portal. So the example that I'm going to use today is Sandra. So I think we all are very familiar with the fact that lots of us are working from home today. So there's, um, you know, whether it's um, a request or an expense for perhaps like a new phone, whether it's you know going out to a meeting, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we have to start doing that again. So whether it's for things like food, accommodation, um, travel or mileage, what we want to do is opposed to um, simply just sending it in and recording that expense um, via the finance department, we want to make sure that it's approved and it's in line with their own internal policies. So I'm going to take our member of staff, who is Sandra, and I'm going to log into WAP. Now, what Sandra has just here is the, the WAP user interface. And again, we're using a single Sage database. So all of the information here, once it's been approved, sits within your Sage 200 system. But the premise of WAP is, is modular. So there's three, there's three kind of um, elements to it. 
as I mentioned, the first is requesting something, the second is approving it, the third is taking the two and then posting it to Sage in real time. So as you can see here on the menu, we've got requisitions, project requisitions, sales orders. Um, process works in a very similar way, but for different items, different processes. But if today we take expenses, I'm going to create a new one. So if we use an example of, so Sandra is going out to a client meeting today, um, or she's just finished her meetings. Um, part of that process is a mileage that she needs to submit for approval to make sure it's in line with what we've approved internally, but also for food. So um, if we go for a urgent re reason, which is um, client meeting to be reimbursed, ASAP. Now this might not be the, the best reason, but it gives you the ability to um, say that it's urgent. So it's going to flag it so you can start to work through some of the priorities. What we're going to do is we're going to add an expense item. So we're going to click just here. We have the ability to associate it with the meeting. We've got the expense item type. So if I add a hotel, I've got a junior programmer. I'll talk you through this in just a moment. I'm going to say no, give you an amount just here as well. So it's going to be a very cheap hotel. So the way that this works is that WAP is in, it, in itself a very simple you know, system. We've got just the, you know, requesting something, approving it. But in the background, we have these, um, you know, several workflows. So the setup process is really important. And this is something that the guys at EBS will be able to do for you. But essentially what I've clicked on here is the type of expense that can be set up for you based on the user. So in this case, it's it's Sandra. What we've done is we've set her up to be able to request um, expenses for hotels and flights. This could be for anything um, or you can limit to the two of them. I've also got the um, the job role as well. So we're again, we can start to um, be able to either automatically approve or automatically reject certain expenses based on the job role or the types of things that they can actually expense based on their role as well. So depending on the size of the organization, you can add more complexities to help streamline that process and reduce the bottlenecks. What I've done here, so based on the information that I've entered, we are selecting, is it automatically selecting the correct nominal account? We also have the ability here to select a, um, a job, a header, phage, a stage or activity. Now this relates to um, project accounting. So I think probably a, a good example is, you know, one of our clients, the cost of sale is, is, is fairly large. So there's several meetings, there's several flights, there's several hotel stays as a part of winning that business. So what they want to do is they want to attribute that to a particular project so they can really start to work out what is the true cost of sale. So if we're, we're not gonna use that today, but if we wanted to, that would simply um, associate that um, expense to that particular project so we can then start to work out is this in line with our budget um, but also how much is it costing us where can we make some efficiencies if I haven't put the correct information here it's going to remind me so if we put here so hotel for client meeting business sales I have the ability to attach perhaps an invoice from the hotel or any additional information. But what I'm gonna simply just do here is click save. There we go, it's gonna remind me that I haven't selected the correct project header because that's how we've set it up within the system. And I'm gonna say that this is part of an expense. So I've added my hotel, the second part of that is the mileage. So how did I get there? So what I'm gonna do is again, select the correct meeting type. I'm gonna say hotel just for, for today. I'm gonna to close this and then submit, save and close. So expenses, so it works in a very similar way. So what we're going to do is we're gonna set up the um, system so that it actually recognizes um, based on the user, what type of vehicle they have, how much we are um, contributing um, per mile. 
So for example, we've got the vehicle just here. This is the vehicle that's associated with myself. You have others within the group. How much do we pay per mile? And what this is going to do is simply allow us to, in real time, calculate um, the true cost of the expense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a new line. Again, we've got the job role. I'll leave the journey details blank for just now. But one of the key things really here, and this is something that I really quite like, is as opposed to just calculating your particular mileage, we can actually start to work out from our start and finish point how many miles it was. Um, and then automatically calculate um, the mileage associated with that. So, for example, I'm working from home today. Let's say Sandra is working from home and she her job is to go into the Psycon office for a meeting. It's a return journey. It doesn't include my regular commute. I want to calculate the distance. So, as you can see here, we've got the um, the, the rough time, the mileage, and I'm going to say, yep, yeah, that's absolutely correct. What that's going to do is take into account the actual mileage, the pence per mile that we um, that we are contributing towards that. We're saying that there's no personal mileage. It's just a business expense. Again, it's reminded me to add the project. So let me just do that. So now I have the additional line item. So I'm going to save and close. We now have our two line items. So based on the, um, you know, our hotel stay, we've got the value, which is the £99. Then what we have is based on the mileage that we did to go from home to the business meeting, it calculates based on our vehicle, how many miles it was, the pence per mile, and gives you a total, which we have just here. So as you can see, just in the bottom right hand corner, we now have the net and also the gross. So the total amount that we are expensing. What we're now going to do is click save and submit. So Sandra has now submitted her expense, as you can see just here. That's then going to go through to Aruba. Now, what happens here is, again, every single business is different. So you can automatically approve certain expenses for a certain value, but you can also um, say or state that um, based on a certain type of expense or hotel expense has to be approved by your direct manager and that's what we're going to do here today so what happens is Sandra's added her items um, she's now submitted it her, her manager Corey who's her direct line manager then receives an email notification to come into WAP now that could be via the mobile app or via the desktop version to come in review and either approve or reject it so brilliant so I'm going to close this and we're now going to switch over to Corey. So Corey has just been notified. Corey's now logging into his system. Now, as you can see with the demo system, we've got lots of things that are still waiting for approval. But what we do have are the two items that have just been submitted. So we have an overview of the fact that they're urgent. We've got the time that they were submitted and the items themselves. So if we click on these, I now have an overview of everything that Sandra um, has submitted. So one of the key things here is that we're asking the user to, to enter as much information as possible. We don't want to overwhelm them and ask them to do too much, but the more information such as, you know, attaching perhaps like an invoice or giving the reason for why we're expensing this, it allows um, the manager to actually make a decision on whether to approve or reject it. So the more evidence we have, the more likely we are to approve it. So we've got all of the information here. I know that Sandra's going for a meeting. I'm simply going to approve this and approve a second one. What then happens is Sandra then receives um, an email notification and she can either go into the app or the website to view all of her completed and approved um, expense items. So what we're doing here is that Sandra can um, submit an expense in real time. She's also notified when it's completed as well. If, for example, Corey's you know, busy out of meetings, he will receive several notifications until it's um, approved. If he's on holiday, we can set it up so that um, the next level or next approver is notified um, whilst he's away. So what we're doing here is we're preventing any potential bottlenecks. 
but we're also asking you know the members of staff that who are um, submitting the expenses to take on some of that um, that inputting of the data. Brilliant. So just to recap before we go into Sage itself, the first step was Sandra was going on a a, um, a sales meeting. She wanted needed to expense her mileage for that meeting and also a hotel stay. She's added the correct information. It's automatically associated with the correct nominals based on her role. She then submits that. It goes through to her manager. Corey then um, approves it. He can either eject, um, so approve or reject. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that that information is directly um, inputted within Sage. So the information, so Sandra um, as an individual will actually have her own purchase ledger um, account. So if you go into Sandra, search for her. Now this is really useful actually because it does allow you to work out exactly how much um, she has expensed over a period of time. But if we select here and we just what we now have is we've got the expense item just here. We can drill down into that. We've also got a list of all of the other items that Sandra has requested over time as well. We have the value. We've also got the status, where it came from, how she requested this, and of course this, uh, the source. So at the moment we're looking at the purchase ledger. What we also have, so you know, one of the questions that we do have is, so say someone has, um, you know, submitted something, but it hasn't been approved yet. Where does it sit? So we're not posting that directly. It kind of sits uh, within our pending WAP invoices. So again, you've got visibility on things that have been either, you know, um, waiting to be approved, rejected, or not currently approved. So you've got real-time visibility on um, expenses coming into the organisation. So there we go. So the, the the three key areas really are creating and submitting a requisition. We've got the approvals process, which you can have several different workflows based on the value of the um, the expense, the type of person requesting it. You can create a framework around that, and then the ability to view and report on the expense transactions within Sage. And I think the key benefit is that you've got real time visibility on expenses um, coming into the organisation. And obviously a, a true understanding of your, you know, your your cash position as well. I think one of the things we won't go through today, um, but we could perhaps expand on, is the um, ability to kind of connect that with project accounting. And it's one of the things that we are finding kind of really key with organisations that perhaps are um, wanting you know, employees to expense, um, you know, perhaps marketing expenses. Um, or have set certain budgets for certain departments. We can then start to work with project accounting to understand how the team's performing, what the existing budget is like, and also what the true cost is um, of servicing an existing account or obviously a new sale. Brilliant. So that's a very, very high level overview. So hopefully that makes sense. More than happy to um, take any questions now, but we're also um, able to perhaps, you know, if it's something of interest, work with the guys at EBS and we can provide you with a, a tailored demonstration. So every company is different and the workflows can vary. But in a nutshell, it's a three step process, simply creating and submitting, approving and viewing the real time data within Sage. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ben. Yeah, I was going to say, if anyone has got any questions, feel free to uh, pop them in the chat or you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and ask them now. Um, as Ben said, it really is. Um, just a flavour of what can be done through the ex the expenses module. Um, I mean, obviously, you've, we've got apps available for submitting expenses as well. You can take your photo, you know, photos of receipts. It can read those receipts, put them in as well. So um, there's lots uh, of functionality, I think, uh, 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 that's within the product, uh, which Ben hasn't shown. Um, but yeah, from a top level uh, flavour of what can be done, um, hopefully that's given you a, enough of an overview. So um, not seeing any questions coming in yet, um, but obviously if there are, um, feel free to just, like I say, drop them in the chat or alternatively, uh, more than welcome to contact uh, both uh, or either myself uh, or Darren here at EBS, uh, and we can obviously uh, pick that up with Ben as well. There is, there is, this is uh, Darren, there is one additional thing that you might find useful if you wanted more information. There is a help and user guide that's freely available. Yeah, so again, I appreciate it's been a very, very high level overview. There's lots of little bits that we could go through. You're more than welcome to view this um, help and user guide. It's got all of the information in there. Or simply just reach out to the guys at EBS and say, look, this is what we're doing. This is what we think might be useful. Can it do this? Um, and they'd be more than happy. To 
Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Ben. Yes, definitely worth having a look at those uh, help and user guides uh, for all the products for SciCon. Um, very open in terms of what's available out there. You don't have to buy the product to then find out how it works. Um, lots of screenshots in there as well. Uh, it gives you a good idea and it's, it's useful to sort of search it if you've got any questions. You know, can it handle this? Can it do that? How how might it work? But obviously that's what we're here for as well. So um, yeah, uh, we're happy to do a bit more of a detailed demo if required. So without further ado, without sort of you know going over our uh, allowed uh, time slot, we'll finish the session now. Um, and um, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, speak to everybody soon. It's brilliant. Thanks all. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much.